Hi everyone and welcome to the part in which we are gonna set up the glass elements and windows in our scene. So before we do that, let's just quickly switch back to the outliner here and enable our windows layer. Now I'm gonna right click here on this collection and choose the select objects option here. You can see we can select all of our windows this way. So let me now hide everything except of them by pressing shift H. And what we have to do right now is separating the glass panels from the window frames. In order to do that, we simply enter the edit mode and well, this is what's happening. And the reason for that is we are using the shape keys. So if we switch to the basic shape key here in this huge menu here, um, the shape of the object will be back to its original form. But once we leave the edit mode, we will see how this model looks with all of those shape key values applied. Nonetheless, if we enter the edit mode, we still need to separate those glass elements. So let's switch to the materials here. We are in face mode and when you click the material, the shader ball will highlight automatically for you. So you can see if we click around the object, the selection here changes. Let's select one of the glass panels and now let's click this select button here. What it does, it automatically selects that material within the entire object. I'm going to now hit P key and separate this glass panel out of the model. We now have to repeat that process to every single window. So I'm going to do it and get back to you once it's all done. One important note, if your windows were duplicated around the scene as instances, when you enter the edit mode, you can see all of them highlighted. So now if I separate my glass material out of this selected model, we will lose it in all of the instances. So what you have to do in order to avoid that is duplicating every single instanced window before you do that. So I've pressed shift D, I'm going to hide the duplicate and delete the original right now. Shift D, hide, delete, shift D, hide, delete. Now, unfortunately, I have to unhide everything, select my windows collection here and press shift eight, uh, sorry, shift H again in order to hide everything except of my windows. Now with all of my glass panels separated from the window frames, I need to do a certain trick. So here on the left, you will see we have this object options menu. And at the very bottom of, of this menu, we have something called cycles settings. A lot of people don't know about it. So here we can't influence uh, the way this a particular object will behave within the cycles rendering engine. So for example, we can switch its visibility to camera, to the diffuse ray, uh, to the glossy rays and so on. I will get into those details later in the course, in the advanced section of the shaders. But for now, you just have to remember, we only need to leave the glossy and camera uh, options on. So let's do it to all of our objects. And to give you a general idea how those settings work, we will get back to our main camera very soon and we will see how it all works with the area lamps added in the previous steps. Now, when we decide to render the central region of our interior, there will be a new situation. So you can see right now we have this bright square visible and with the windows disabled, it was not here. And this is our area lamp we've added in one of the previous steps. So why is that happening? Why with the windows enabled, we are now seeing it? Well, the, the way those kind of light sources work in Blender is if the camera is facing them directly, they are invisible. But as soon as the light from those sources 
uh, correlates with any objects within the scene, they become visible. So for example, you can see those lights reflected here in the floor. You can see them through the window. But as soon as I select one of our windows, you can see I have the glass panel selected and hide it. The area lamp becomes invisible again. So now the question is how we can keep both our glass panels and the area lamp visible. And the answer to that is the cycles settings we also set up for the glass elements. So with my area lamp selected, I can now switch its visibility to transmission. So when it passes through the transparent object, it's not visible anymore. You can see that also changes the look of our scene a little bit. So we've lost this nice reflection we had here around the floor. It's also visible when I disassemble the windows, but we will fine tune that in the final step by setting up the environment visibility in the reflections. So I'm going to use a similar trick we have here, but it's going to be done using the nodes in the shader setup. Let's now set up the glass shader itself. So we don't need the UV editor here any longer. I'm going to switch to the object settings here and select one of our glass panels. You can see by default, we already have something called Choco for Glass Basic Note Setup. If we hit Tab key, you can actually get into that note setup and see how it looks. So this is something we have prepared uh, as our in-house shader before Blender developed the principled BSDF shader. And to be honest, that shader works pretty well out of the box once you apply it to any of the objects. So in our case, with the ray visibility settings set up like this, this could actually work without uh, any further changes, but let's focus on those glass elements we have here at the staircase. I've hidden some of the furnishings just so we have a better view at our element. And with, when we compare it to the reference, you can see here the glass is almost completely transparent. And what we have within it are those tiny reflections of the white chairs we have, or sorry, bar stools we have here. So there are couple approaches to the glass shaders in general when working on the interior scenes. I will now show you how I prepare a glass shader for an element like this. So let's simply select it, go to the shader settings here and create a new material called, let's say, glass general. And for the general purposes, we could actually use the principled BSDF shader, which is applied automatically. The only changes we have to do are the transmission here and the IOR, which, yeah, and this is another topic to discussion in my opinion, because there is something called an IOR table and the IOR stands for index of refraction, meaning we could theoretically use some of the values posted online as the way, uh, as a value in, in between, in which, I don't know how to say it, in which the glass bends the refraction that's going through it. So we can observe this effect in an image like this, for example, the straw gets into the glass and then it's distorted by this water surface. So we have even two transparency or two IOR distortions taking place here. Um, and we could theoretically use the values from this table and plug them here as the IOR settings for our shader. The problem with this is unfortunately it doesn't look good in my opinion. And especially in our case, this glass surface is very, very thin, meaning there will be barely any distortion happening. But let's see what happens if we 
just use the value of 1.33, which is kind of standard for gloss. So there's still nothing visible and we need to increase the transmission settings here as well as reduce the roughness and let's maybe leave the specular as a default. So if we move around the object, let me center my rotation on it. You can see those strange artifacts happening. This is actually a sun lamp which reflects somehow strangely in this object. And here, I think we are just getting a little bit too much reflection. So let's see how it, how the shader looks with the IOR value set as one. I think it's in my personal opinion and taste. I think this little very, very slight distortion that's happening, that that's actually everything we need within this kind of material. If we increase it to theoretically correct values. I don't think that looks good. It simply becomes, well, too unnatural in my opinion. So let's still work on the brightness just a little bit. So we have almost clear transparency and let's reduce the IOR to one as I suggested. The problem is with this kind of value we lose all of the reflections within the material and no matter how much we increase the specular slider here, there's nothing happening. So it's strangely the IOR value is linked with the reflections of that shader. That's why I personally prefer creating very, very simple node setup in order to render glass objects like the one we have here. To create the setup, let's enlarge our window and I'm going to delete the principled BSDF shader. I'm going to press Shift A and add a standard glass BSDF, which it works if we, if we just plug it in here, set the IOR to 1.33 and render a preview. This will work basically the same way as the shader we just created using the principled BSDF. So you can see we have the same artifacts and everything. That's why let's reduce the IOR to one and let's add a mix shader right now. So with the mix shader here, I'm going to add the glossy BSDF shader and this will control the reflections without uh, within our glass setup. Let's just reduce, reduce the roughness to something very, very low like this and switch back to quickly preview our glass material. Let me switch to the camera actually and see how it all looks. Let's also apply it here. So we finally get what we actually want in our scene. So no more shadows in this area. Um, the first thing I try doing is reducing the value, color value for the glass BSDF node. So it's actually not purely white. Let's set up something quite high as well. So 0 0.975 maybe. Um, we also might consider switching those things off for the upper part just to get a little bit more reflections here, but that's not necessary uh, for all of those objects. Um, one thing you can clearly notice here, we have way too many reflections if we compare our shader to the reference, but to reduce that using that slider only, well, that might work or might not. It actually works pretty well, to be honest. But let me also show you a very quick setup that I'm using from time to time to fine tune this kind of quick glass elements, glass materials. So I'm going to add input and layer weight node and pl plug the facing output to the mix input here. 
What this node does, it actually makes this shader less reflective when I'm looking at it straight from my camera angle and it becomes more reflective once I change my camera angle. I know it's hardly visible when I'm just rotating within the viewport, but I will include a slideshow below this video as well so you can see that effect better. Um, to fully control that node, I'm also using the RGB curves and making them just like that. So what this point means, when I'm gonna face this glass element straight ahead right now. I will still get some reflections. So let me move this this entire curve a little bit higher. You can see the, the higher I move this point, the more reflections I have looking at 90%, uh, 90 degree angle at this element. When I go with go down with the slider the effect disappears so I try keeping it somewhere around this 0 0.25 value if I switch back now I know it's a little bit too reflective so I can go make this curve quite flat within this area and then make it quite steep within this end of area so those areas here are those very uh, high angles that I'm looking at from from which I'm looking at this object so if I move this entire curve down you can see the reflections also disappear yeah let's not over complicate it let's just make it like this and I think that's really enough for this element I would even maybe consider uh, making the glass just a little bit darker, so 0.95 maybe. So we can now see this uh, glass line here. But if we compare it to the reference, this is also very, very bright and reflective. Maybe not as much in this area as in our scene, but we'll try to fine tune it later. Let's now unhide the chairs, the table. And yeah, I think I think the, this looks pretty pretty good as for now. Um, that would be it, in my opinion, as for setting up the glass. Uh, what I would also just recommend would be cleaning up the scene a little bit. So I have my glass panels selected right now. And you can see when we've separated them from the main window frame, they took all of the window materials with them. So you might consider simply reducing those materials, removing them from your glass elements. It's not necessary, it's not influencing uh, the render times or, or anything in any way, but it simply helps you keeping things organized and in place. And since we have added various chalk of war models as for the windows, you can see the, the glass shader is different within some of the models. So just to keep it more organized, you might consider switching the same shader in all of the glass panels, just so when you edit one of them, you will have the same effect, the same consistent uh, glass look within the entire scene. So that would be it as for the glass setup. Uh, as I mentioned, we will uh, discuss some of the topics, some of the things I described in this video in the chapter uh, of the advanced cycles materials, covering the advanced aspects of cycles materials. But for now, I want to thank you for watching and we are going to move on with the glossy materials. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofort store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.